Greetings, everyone. Well, it's time to look at episode two of Game of Thrones season two with the Nightlands. So, here we go. Well, beginning at King's Landing, Tyrion Lannister arrives at his quarters to find his lover Shay and Lord Varys conversing. Varys and Tyrion suddenly threaten each other. Varys that he could reveal Shay's presence despite time with Lannister's instructions, and Tyrion that he would kill Varys in return. During a small council meeting, Queen Regent Cersei Lannister reads Robb Stark's peace terms, ripping up the letter after reading it, as well as a letter from the Knights, from the Knights Watch Lord Commander Jorah Mormont, asking for more men to man the wall and warning of the Watch's encounters with the undead. With the exception of Tyrion, the small council doesn't take Mormont's letters seriously. Later, Tyrion has dinner with City Watch Commander Lord Jano Slint, discussing the purge of King Robert Baratheon's bastard children. When Janos refuses to reveal who ordered the purge, Tyrion has him arrested and exiled to the Night's Watch, with Bronn taking over his position. Cersei later confronts Tyrion about exiling Janos, and Tyrion realizes that it was King Joffrey Baratheon, not Cersei, who ordered the purge. He warns his sister that it will be difficult to rule over millions who want you dead. Well, that's true. And you, at Dragonstone, Davos Seaworth and his son Mathos manage to convince Davos' old friend, the pirate Salador San, to bring his ships to join them in the war. In exchange, San will get to ransack King's Landing, though Davos cannot promise his second request to bed the Queen. While Seldor and Davos express displeasure in Mathos' devotion to the Lord of Light. Later, Davos tells Stannis Baratheon and Melisandre of San's willingness to aid their army with his thirty ships. Stannis orders Davos and Mathos from the room, at which point Melisandre seduces Stannis and seduces Stannis and promises him a son if he will give himself completely to the Lord of, to the Lord of Light. Ew, saucy. Anyway, on the Iron Islands, the young Granger returns to his homeland, but is unhappy with the lack of ceremony on his arrival. He is greeted by a young woman, Yara. They share a horse ride to Pike, during which Theon attempts to physically seduce her. At Pike, Theon receives a cold welcome from his father, Balon. Theon presents Balon with the offer from Rob that will make Balon the king of the Iron Islands, but Balon refuses while insulting Theon for his adoption of northern customs. Balon instead wants to take wants to take his crown with Yara, who turns out to be Theon's sister, ugh, at the helm of his fleet. Balon does not intend to fight the Lannisters, and Theon realizes that his intention is to take the North for himself instead. Uh oh. Anyway, in the Red Waste. Rokara's horse returns to Daenerys Targaryen's camp, carrying his separate head in one of its saddlebags. So Jorah Mormont tells her it is a message from one of the other cows, none of whom like the idea of a Kalasar being ruled by a woman. Seriously? Daenerys vows revenge as she prepares a funeral pyro, funeral pyro, pyre for Rokara. Anyway, on the King's Road, two city watchmen arrive at the caravan with a royal warrant, searching for Gendry. However, they are turned away by Yorin after he threatens them. Later, Gendry reveals to Arya Stark that he knows she is a girl. She is a girl, and after a conversation about why the City Watch will be hunting him, she in turn also reveals to him that she is actually Arya Stark after learning that her father met Gendry several weeks before he was executed. Huh. And finally, at Craster's Keep, Samuel Tarly helps Gilly, one of Craster's daughter wives, ugh, when she is confronted by John's direwolf ghost. Sam asks Jon Snow about taking her with them, but Jon refuses since they aren't supposed to be involved in Craster's family affairs. Mm -hmm. Gilly, who is pregnant, refuses to reveal why she wants to leave, but the conversation again arouses Jon's suspicions about what happens to Craster's sons. Later that night, Jon witnesses Craster taking a newborn child into the woods. He follows Craster, only to see him returning empty-handed. Hearing the crack of ice, he rushes to the other child where he sees a white where he sees a white walker retrieve the baby. Plot twist! Before John can pursue it, Craster knocks, hits him over the head, knocking John unconscious. Oh boy. So yeah, that was interesting. <laughs> anyway, let's look at the production of the episode beginning with writing. The episode was written by David Benioff and D.B. Weiss, based on original material from George R. R. Martin's second book of the series The Clash of Kings. It includes most of the plot of the chapters Arya 2, Tyrion 2, Arya 3, Theon 1, part of Daenerys 1, Tyrion 3, part of Arya 5, part of Tyrion 5, part of Jon 3, 
and part of Theon 2, chapter 6, 8 through 12, 19 through 20, 23 through 25, respectively. One of the main deviations from the books was the removal of the of the character of the new commander of City Watch, City Watch, Sir Jocelyn Bywater. His role merged with the already introduced Braun. Another character that was excluded was Aaron Dampere, who was not present to welcome his nephew Theon at the Iron Islands. Instead, he was received by his sister, a scene that took place much later in the books. Also, some scenes that were only subtly implied in the original were made more explicit in the episode. The scenes depicting Craster delivering a newborn son to the White Walkers and the sexual relationship between Stannis and Melisandre were written into the show by the producers. The episode was directed by Alan Taylor, making it the fourth episode he directed for the show. Taylor would direct three more episodes of the show, two of them in season two and one in season seven. Nice. Anywho, now on to casting. Theon Greyjoy's family is cast in this episode. The role of his father, Balon Greyjoy, the Lord of the Iron Islands, went to, went to English actor Patrick Malahide. The character of his sister was renamed from the original books from Asha to Yara. In order to avoid confusion with the already established character Osha, the wildling captive at Winterfell, and Gemma Whalen was chosen to play the role. After seeing Whalen and Alfie Allen acting together, the show, show, creator, the show creators assured that they made, quote, an insanely good pair of siblings. Alfie Allen's sister, the English pop star Lily Allen, asserted that she had been offered the role of Yara Greyjoy, but had turned it down due to some scenes potentially being awkward to film. Alfie Allen, however, vehemently denied his sister's claims. Oh, really? Also introduced in this episode are the three caged recruits traveling with the Night's Watch caravan. Three characters were <clears throat> the three characters were briefly seen in last season's finale, played by uncredited extras. <clears throat> For this season, they were cast by Andy Beckwith as Warge, Gerard Jordan as Spider, and the German actor of Tom Wallachia, sorry if I mispronounced that, as the mysterious Jack and Hagar of the free city of Laura. Lashia had not heard about the show before auditioning for the part on tape from Berlin, but when he was able to screen a few episodes in a, spare, in a few spare hours during a meeting with the producer, Sam George Allen Taylor, became an enthusiast and even read the first books of the series in a couple of days? Sheesh. Sheesh. Finally, the part of the Lysini pirate Salador song went to Lucian Mismati. <coughs> Again, sorry if I... <coughs> Again, sorry if I mispronounced that. Ms. Mati's physical appearance, a British black doctor of, of, Tanz <coughs> of Tanzanian descent, contrasts with Salador's portrayal in the books, where he is described with the typical fair-haired and fair-skinned look of the free city of Lys. And now finally, the filming locations. <coughs> the episode introduces the new location of Pike, the great J.C. seat of power on the Iron Islands. Scenes set there were filmed at Lordsport Harbor, Ballantoy, in Northern Ireland's county of Antrim. Excuse me. <clears throat> the filming at the harbor took place on August 18th, 19th, and 22nd, 2011, and from August 15th, there was limited public access to the zone. The local shops and fishermen, who had to temporarily berth their boats at the nearby town of Ballycastle, were compensated by the production. Other locations in Northern Ireland were used once again, including the interiors in the Paint Hall Studio in Belfast. Nice. So overall, this episode is really interesting, and the fact that it introduces Theon's family is also really nice, too. So, there you go. So overall, I give The Nightlands four Iron Thrones out of five. Well, tune in next week as we take a look at What is Dead May Never Die. Ooh. So until then, remember everyone, winter is coming. <laughs>